Come on. Good evening and welcome to the May 24th, 2016 meeting of the Spokonic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with township policy. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of silence. Moments of thanks for the individual serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. Amen. The clerk will please call the roll. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mr. Vanderhoff? Here. Ms. Winterfield? Here. Mayor Cole? Here. I'd like to welcome Health Officer Peter Coriel as Acting Manager while Mr. Holberg is on vacation. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is presentations. Is Matthew Rothman here? Oh, maybe he's just not here yet. He's not here yet. Okay. Um, the next item is Citizen of the Year. And we will ask Mr. Engelbart to step forward and the entire council to come down. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 
Stephen's proclamations are tough. <laughs> They're not easy. But I, and I hear it's very tough to write, too. Dave, could you hold it up again, please? Thank you. All I could say is I'm very honored and I appreciate the decision and the support of persons that uh, advocated for me and uh, asked uh, the council for their support for the uh, uh, Citizen of the Year. And I am deeply honored and I really appreciate it very, 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 very well, much. It's, it's well deserved and we thank Barbara for allowing you all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm sure it's many nights that Barbara's home by herself when you're out and about. So. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> so you get to watch hey. the show. Do we want a picture with Ed holding it? With us in the middle? Ed in the middle? Okay. Yeah. Why don't you take that one? 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 This is a great community. We have a lot of people who have done a lot over the years. Okay, and um, they are persons that have served this town very, very well. And I hope many of them down the road will have the same opportunity to be a citizen of the year. Okay, you. you're never you're very right. humble. Okay. 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 Way to go, Ed. <laughs> did our Eagle Scout come in? He did. We're going to ask the council. Yeah, it's, it's your turn. Come forward. We all had the pleasure of, or some of us had the pleasure of going to the Eagle Scout ceremony the other day, and Mayor Cole gave me the honor of reading the proclamation for you, Matthew, so thank you, and it's well deserved. Um, whereas for more than a hundred years, the Boy Scouts of America has helped mold the future leaders of this country by combining educational activities and lifelong values with fun. And whereas the involvement of young men in the Boy Scouts of America is of great importance to our community and our country. And whereas the rank of Eagle Scout is the highest honor a Scout can attain in the Boy Scouts of America. And whereas the Quantic Township resident, Matthew Rothman, has earned the required 21 merit badges and completed a service project for the benefit of the community, making improvements to the police shooting range at Foothills Park. And whereas Matthew was presented with the Eagle Scout Award at a court of honor on May 1st, 2016. And whereas Matthew's scouting activities and achievements have brought honor to himself, his family, and his community. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Township of Aquanic and its residents, Mayor David Cole and the members here of the Township Council hereby recognize the achievement of Matthew Rothman in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. So, congratulations again, Matthew. <laughs> so, my project was at the um, Aquanic Township Police Department's firing range. And I built 14 obstacles. They were um, barricades to help them improve for their shooting requirements. Um, and I also did 14 yard markers on the sidelines to help them with their requirements as well. And I just found out a couple weeks ago that um, multiple other towns are using my firing range as well as the FBI. So. Oh. All right. There you go.
Troop 144 because they have produced a number of Eagle Scouts uh, in town, and it's a great honor to have all of the Eagle Scouts uh, come out of uh, Troop 144. You guys are doing a great job, and we appreciate everything you do for the community and all of the projects that you do in town. So it's greatly appreciated. Thank, Thank you. Pictures? Sure. <laughs> Why not? That's what that's for. Come on up front, Dad. You can come on up front. You guys missed it. We were doing the whole thing like this before. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Matt. Reports or comments from any volunteers serving our community. The next item on the agenda is public comment. This public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period of public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone, provide your name and address for the record. Yes, right in the front. <laughs> My name is Robert Dixon. I live at 21 Evans Place, Unit A. I really came to the council to make them aware that on Evans Place, uh, there's a definite traffic problem with the speed of which the people come through that area and uh, the fact that there are no posted uh, speed limits. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that somebody's going to get hit or something's going to get hit. And uh, the, all the people in my building at 21 Evans feel the same way. As we sit in the front of, on the front porch, we can see these people, even at night, riding by over 35 miles an hour, which I feel is a little too fast. Somebody's going to get hurt. Thank you for your comments, and we'll definitely bring that to the uh, police department's attention. Right. And we'll see if we can get a uh, DPW to get a, a speed limit sign on that road. I had a quick question. Did that mostly happen when they were doing the sewer projects and they were driving, no. or even all the time? No, okay. All the time. All right. People are trying to beat the light. Okay. Uh, all right. Any other? Uh, Alberta? Alberta Oliva 4501 Tudor Drive. Hi, everybody. This is just an opinion that I have. I'm hoping that the council <clears throat> and the mayor is going to take a good look at uh, the two females that will be left in Parks and Rec once Denise leaves. They're very, very good uh, females, Barbara and Katie. Uh, I've gone into the office and asked a couple of questions. They know the answers. and. They're hard workers, so I'm hoping that they're going to be taken into consideration to fill Denise's spot. Thank you. Uh, I'll just make a quick comment, Alberta. Yes. Um, it's not our decision on who gets hired for that. It's the town manager's decision. Oh, I understand that, but I'm sure you have input. I'm sure you do have input. There's no, no question in my mind about that. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> what about the carpet? Alberta? I like how everybody goes, mm. Lou, <laughs> did you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Lou A. Bear, 11 Copley Court. Um, I just wanted to thank um, a number of folks that came out this past Saturday to help us place the uh, American flags on the veterans' graves in the Reformed Church Cemetery. We had over 70 or 75 people that came out, including Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, parents, uh, the women's club, uh, you name it. We had so many people that came out to help us. We did the whole cemetery in a little over an hour. Wow. And we had a chance to go into the, into the French with Chapter Paul and have free food, which was so nice of them to do that, too. And I have to thank the, the, the volunteers, and I have to thank the Reformed Church for being so comfortable and so helpful with us, too, as well. Thank, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? 
Yes, sir. Sorry for the poll. No, <laughs> I'm the one that sat behind the poll, so uh, thank you, Mayor. My name is George Stafford. I'm the outreach director for the New Jersey Highlands Coalition. And um, all over the state, um, environmentalists and representative environmental groups like myself are reaching out to uh, municipal uh, bodies with a request. Um, we have uh, uh, old data as far as the, US, uh, the New Jersey water supply master plan is concerned. Um, it's from 1996. I used to carry around a 1996 cell phone to show everybody how outdated the. Uh, in the 20 years before that data came out, that the data that we're presently using to plan water projects with and to plan um, any kind of changes, uh, DEP is coming through with a lot of changes, you may be aware of that. Um, we received about 45 inches of rain per year in a 20 year period. We're getting close to 50 now. 1996, we had 8 million people, we have 9 million people now. So there's a lot of changes and we're working with old data. So I have resolution here that I'd like you to consider um, to uh, ask the state government and particularly the governor's office to release this information. Now this isn't a political thing because the Corps administration wouldn't release this stuff either. And um, in 2013 DEP said it would be forthcoming and it's not there. Um, we don't particularly know why unless the news is really bad and, and they don't want it released. But it's something that we have to know. Uh, ignorance in this case is not bliss. And uh, we really need to know uh, just exactly what the facts are as far as water supply, runoff, water quality, etc. cetera. Um, there's all sorts of questions about water quality, and I'm sure you all know that. So I'll leave this with the clerk, if I may. Um, I'll send the clerk a, an electronic copy for her convenience tomorrow. Um, and I appreciate your time. Unless anybody has any questions, I'll just leave this with the clerk. I have a question. I, I, I'm a little confused here. You don't have data, or you have data from 1996 on the Everybody in this order. state is working on the data that was uh, um, compiled before 1996 and issued in 1996 on what the situation with water in the state of New Jersey is. Okay, you know you're in a flood town here, right? I'm sorry? We're a flood town. Uh, yeah. Okay, you are aware of that. Yeah. So this yeah. Kind oh, of I'm, I'm, very I'm down the road. I, I live oh. in Ward. Oh, I should have given you my address. I'm sorry. You know what? So. You didn't get paid. <laughs> 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 no, so you're again, my bad. Um, I live at 16 Kitchell Avenue in Wharton, New Jersey, and I'm a former town councilman, a former Morris County tax commissioner. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of uh, uh, that sort of thing. So, yes. And it's, a, it's important to everybody. Um, if, you know, if, if you're uh, North Caldwell and you're high and dry sitting on the mountain behind uh, uh, the Willowbrook Mall, uh, you know, your economy in the state is based on, on water. So it's, it's, it's important for everybody to know. Do you collect this information yearly or? This is something that's compiled over a long period of time and issued occasionally so that we can get a, a, a new look at, at what the water uh, situation is. One prepared or? Yes. It just hasn't been released. Hasn't but been released. you know, since you've been a council person, you know government works very slow. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at the state level. Yes, yeah, so also. The, I'm, we're, I'm we'd be more than happy to, to consider. We're just it. trying to give. Yeah. We're just trying to give you know, a, a little push. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With fine. your help. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Leave it with the clerk, and we'll definitely take that up uh, for consideration. Okay. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you. Any? Anyone else with a public yes. comment? Public comment? No one else? There being no additional public comment, we'll continue on with the agenda. Next on the agenda is Public Hearing Ordinance Number 2016-08, Ms. Marsh. This is Ordinance Number 2016-08, an ordinance appropriating $575,000 from the Capital Improvement Fund for various capital improvements in and by the Township of Quantic in the County of Morris, New Jersey. <laughs> okay, you guys aren't going to stay? I've done that. I've done that. Are there any comments from the council? Yes, I'd like Pete to explain this to us. The ordinance? Okay, that's good enough for me. Are there any comments from council? 
No. Is there anyone in the audience that has questions or comments on this ordinance? Please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Rob? Rob Casco, 94th Street, Paquonic, New Jersey. I just wanted to point out regarding uh, Section 1E, when the entire, well, the, when the, the skate park came up again, the, uh, the committee for the skate park came and presented a plan before council and said, we're not looking to spend taxpayer money, we're going to raise all the money ourselves. And I sat through that meeting and I said, it's not going to happen, they're not going to raise the money, and there, there's no way that we're going to get this entire skate park done without tapping into taxpayer money. And lo and behold, just a few months later, here we are and we're about to appropriate $26,000 just for design and engineering. For a feasibility study, basically. Not even insurance, implementation, construction, fencing, security. Just to see if it's possible. So I, I'd like to know before the council votes on it, how much has the skate park committee raised to go towards this expense? It's been months. Has, has any money been raised? No, nothing that I am aware of. But it's my understanding that we will not know what they need to raise or how much the skateboard will, park will cost unless we do the study. But shouldn't they pay for that study then? I mean, we could just be throwing good money after bad at this point. If we're going to spend $26,000, it's not a drop in the bucket. It's a lot of money to sp just spend on a feasibility study. We're not Rob treating them any different than anyone else. We just well, we spent a huge sum on a preservation plan for the Morton Berry House that we're not sure that we're purchasing or not. But there's different initiatives that we take on, and we have an overwhelming support for the skate park. The only one that continually is negative happens to be you. I, uh, with all due respect, I, really, I, I don't think you can sit up there and say, I'm the only one in town that I'm that is, hearing from. Um, well, maybe I'm the vocal one, but to say that I'm the only one in town, I think, is a gross exaggeration. Rob, I did ask the question, correct me if I'm wrong, I asked the question when I looked at this and, and said, you know, did we decide to do this, but we're just appropriating it. We're not necessarily even spending it. Is that correct? That's correct. This so is. that's the only reason I didn't question it. I, I know, I mean, I did question it because I was not saying that I was agreeing to spend it. However, we did appropriate it in the event they come out with a plan. We don't even know where it's going to go, I don't believe. We haven't even, we haven't even, de we haven't even decided that we're going to do it. So, it is um, going to be on the uh, agenda, the next meeting, for discussion. Okay, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Rob. When we appropriate something, appropriate something, it's, it's, it's going to get spent. Absolutely. Okay, so I, that's people the question tell you, I I'm, I'm not blah, blah, blah. No, Rob, it's going to get spent. I, I know it is, and that's why I'm up here now. No, that's okay. Well, and, and, and I don't have a question. I'm just pointing out. Mm -hmm. When this first came up, the committee came up and said, we will raise the money to do this. Okay. And I, I, this I, is I, not them raising the money. This is the town taxpayers fronting the bill. Well, okay. well, I, I think it's unrealistic saying. to think that they could raise $25,000 for a feasible feasibility study. I truly think that's unrealistic. And I think it's even more unrealistic to think they're going to raise the money to actually implement uh, it. You know what, Rob? I agree with you 100%. Uh, okay. Thank you. Are there any, is there anyone else? Sure. Steve? <laughs> Thank you, for Rob, for your comments. Um, <clears throat> we never said, um, the chair of the skate park committee, uh, we actually never said that we were going to pay for it. That no, it was going to, that uh, no taxpayer money would come out of it. We never said that. And um, it's not a feasibility study. It's actually um, money to uh, have design. an actual design. So. It's actually, yeah, it'll, it's not to say like, oh, here's $26,000 and is it going to get done? It's actually, uh, here's, the, we want to get a designer to actually say, this is how you build in that spot. This is what you need to do. And uh, it doesn't even mean that you're going to spend the 26000 So when we got some uh, design estimates, it was 16000 for design estimates. So I think maybe, I don't know 
what the idea was for 26, but maybe it was just a little buffer. I have no idea, but that's what we know. Well, I also do know there was um, the donation of the ramps that we have in our possession now. Yeah. And the value of that is? About 75000 So We've acquired that from Nike. Mm-hmm. And that I would love for you to come out to a meeting. That would be great. Have them on Saturday mornings. Well, that's <laughs> when everyone can come. Why, what do you do Saturday mornings? Saturday mornings, I'm, I'm working. I'm From 9 to 11, you're working? I'm Stop. working at If it's that important Saturday. for you, if it's that important, then come out. But you're, you're the only, to my knowledge, you're the only township committee that meets on the weekend. That's when everyone's available. There's children. Except for you. I don't know what to tell you, but. There's actually children involved, Rob, so. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit more than that. That's true. So well, they all the, will be at the street fair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excuse me? They'll be at the street fair. Yeah, we'll be at the street fair. You can come out and talk to us. Frank? Frank Spazier, 835 West Franklin Avenue. Uh, actually, I sort of agree with Rob. And I'll, and I'll tell you. That's two. That's two. That's two. That's two. <laughs> I'm not totally against it. Oh, sorry, but every time I got up here and wanted to do something, everybody said to me, how much is it going to cost and how are you going to get the money? And that's for all the houses that we built, we took down, and I went out and I got money. And I'm not saying that the town shouldn't pay for it, but there are parks out there that these people keep saying that we should have a park just like that. Why don't they go to that town and ask them how much did it cost to build that thing, and how much does it cost for maintenance? I mean, there are other parks out there that they keep saying is good, so we, we, we want to get a park just like that. So, to me, and but some Frank, of the people that were on the, a, Frank, we, we don't want to have a park just like that. We're going to design what I'm not the land I'm, we decide, and it's all custom built. It's not where you can take cookie cutter where this is equal to But that. if you go to a place that has a park that everybody is using and you find out how much that thing cost, now you have some idea of what kind of cost it's going to cost the town or yeah, they have to have get ideas. the money for it. It's about two hundred thousand dollars. And when, when, you were, when you were pushing to do this before you became a council person, yeah. you said that you were going to raise money for it also, yeah. which you didn't. Which we did. We did? We did, and we gave that money. We donated it to another nonprofit because there was no interest in moving forward, and there was so many problems with the location okay. behind the Okay, so you hall. donated it to somebody else. That, that's good. Yeah. But I, I still think that they have the burden of trying to prove how much this thing is going to cost prior to us spending any money to make it, to see how much it's going to cost. That's just my opinion. Okay, I think that I think the council is going to be very careful with something that's going to cost two hundred thousand dollars. That's why they have a committee. Uh, Rob, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I s clearly see it myself, um, but it's also something that would be good for the kids. I mean, you have to look at both sides of it. There's a cost to it, and and there's a benefit to it. So we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. One thing I do know it is not going by the first aid building. That I can guarantee. Mike? Uh, Mike Petuna, 10, uh, 8 Reynolds Road. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's confusing. <laughs> um, I am in favor of a skate park, the idea of a skate park, without knowing all the ideas of it. Uh, the one thing that is coming up is that you're going to you want to build it in a flood zone. And uh, I think by doing that, you will have a lot more people than Rob against the skate park. And I'm in favor for it. But I'd like to see it. No, location will be discussed at the next meeting. We haven't. Found the it. rumor out there is it's going to be in the flood zone. No, rumor is Reynolds Court. <laughs> in such a place. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Are there any uh, other comments? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2016 08. I'll second. second. Roll call. Mrs. Lawrence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Swinterfield? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes.
Next on the agenda is Public Hearing Ordinance 2016-09, Ms. Marsh. This is ordinance number 2016-09, an ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the Township of Pequannock in the County of Mars, State of New Jersey, and appropriating the sum of $613,000 for financing thereof. Are there any comments from Council? No. Is there anyone in the audience that has questions or comments on this ordinance? Please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2016-09. I'll second it. Roll call. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes. Next on the agenda is Ordinance for Introduction, and we have none for tonight. Next on the agenda is Items for Resolution. Ms. Marsh? Resolutions for approval is this evening, our resolution beginning with 2016-109, authorizing a, 200, a 2016 Municipal Alliance grant application in the amount of $2,000. Resolution 2016-110, approving the designated special event permit application for Grace Bible Church. 2016-111, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the May 23, 2016 bill list. Are there any comments on the resolution from Council? I, I actually had one. The letter that uh, uh, that goes with this um, on the back side, it says if there's more than one municipality involved in the alliance, that grant can be up to 4000 Is that Lincoln Park part of that municipal alliance? Or am I getting that confused with a, with a coalition? He probably knows the answer. There, there's a Lincoln Park, uh, or, you know, no, that's right. I'm just, I was just curious because I sit in on those meetings and I believe Lincoln Park is part of that. So I was just curious why it wouldn't be 4,000. That's all. No? You don't think so? Okay. All right. Is that what it was? Okay. That was my only comment. I wondered if anybody knew. Anyone else? Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make a motion to approve 2016-109 to 2016-111. I'll second it. Roll call. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes. Uh, next item is uh, items for discussion, and there are no items for discussion this evening. Next on the agenda, reports and notices. Are there any comments or questions from Council on the... One report and notice that we have. No. Next on the agenda is Ready? the manager's report. Ready? All right, Ready? Yes, sir. Let's go, Pete. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there is not. If you remember, when we uh, authorized well, the change of service, up, just in case. Yeah, I know. Uh, we decided oh. that. Uh, on certain days, there would be no collection of recycling. But we're fine with it. It's this Monday. So Monday, recycling will not be collected, and it actually will not. There will not be a makeup day. We're putting that out on social media. So our next regular collection is going to be June sixth. Do you remember when we started? Yeah. Right. So all the parties on Memorial Day is you have to wait. You have to wait. So you said there was two days during the year, right? Did yeah, we already had. We already had the one. one. Okay. Right. The beginning of the year. Uh -huh. And so this Monday, <clears throat> but everyone did get a mail or identify in every collection. Day. Hopefully that helps. But um, my assumption is you get calls. It'll help a little. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be a calls. bad day Tuesday. So everyone <laughs> is out there. Please tell ten friends that there is no collection. And tell them and this week. It'll be the following Monday. You know that's gonna be all over Facebook. Why don't you? Well, good. It started already. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but so, will be collected. Oh, so. When's vegetation? Tuesday. Tuesday? Okay. okay. Just recycling. Anything else? That's all. That's, That's it. it. Next on the agenda is uh, council reports and announcements. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. I don't have any big reports. I just, um, actually, Pete, last time I saw you, I had mentioned this in the hallway, so I just wanted to remind you. Um, sure. You said you could work on setting up another shred day for the. Um, Correct. For us, and cool. you don't need uh, the Environmental Commission or anybody's help. You'll be able to just set it up yourself. Good. And, well. Okay. If you need any help, let, let them know, because um, they had asked about it at the last meeting. And also checking into the MUA coming again 
for the hazardous waste day. We don't, I know. I realize they only do that once every like. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know if that was a request we had to do, or whether they just come to us and say we'll be in Baquanic at some uh, point. We're on a three-year cycle. Okay. Um, okay. They they're not coming okay. next year. I think you're at oh, eight seventeen. Oh, okay. All right. So they already know when they're. It'll be nice cycle. if you do something with electronics. Be, I, I uh, le electronics are uh, problematic. In uh -huh. the they're a big problem. Yeah. I reached out. Yeah, store, no. I yeah. reached out to the uh, one guy at the MUA, and he said that uh, he would get back to me. I've never heard back from him. You want to reach out to him? You want me to? Where we provide the dumpster, and they pick the electronics up for free. That would be well worth it. That would be great. But yeah, well, he did. He did say that he's had previous requests from other towns in the county, and the they've been denied. So I'm just wondering. I can get us. I can get us. Well, they were denied because uh, Morris County is one of the few counties left that has a contractor willing to take the material. But the contractor is asking the county to, to actually regionalize the services because um, it's going by the wayside. The program statewide. It's uh -huh. building up all, all over the state. Uh, they they at least are honoring the contract. It's MRM. It's the uh, uh -huh. or RM R uh, and. They'll probably reluctantly consider putting a depot out, but I, I don't think they will actually put one. I talked to Larry Gindo. Well, that's said, who I spoke to. Larry yeah, if, he, if the opportunity presents, he'll let us know, but I wouldn't be too hopeful that that's going to occur. That actually, the reverse is going, uh, where they're asking some municipalities to consolidate because it's costing them now. Because time and money to collect. You you can't get rid of the TV now. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, in the state, it's twenty five dollars yeah. at Best Buy. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to find a lot more TVs just dumped on the side of the road, yeah. um, or uh -huh. dumped illegally. So I think it would be smart of us to do whatever we can to get some sort of electronic recycling. The state of New Jersey required the uh, manufacturers to, to pick up at least the amount of material that they generated within that year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, new technology has, and it goes by weight. So what's happened is TVs from 15, 12 years ago weighed much, much more than TVs of today. So they're only obligated, by example, if they sold, if they manufactured five ton, they only have to recycle for five ton at their charge. Well, five ton, you make it up real quick from 1980 TVs. And then they walk away from it. So what's happened is they're walking away from it. Well, maybe that's the resolution we should be sending to the state. Well, the state is looking at working on yeah, maybe they're too changing that formula, but there's no quick movement. So this is not going to be an easy fix. New Jersey is the entity that said you, you got to remove it from the waste stream and they're the entity that's going to have to try to correct that because right now you're not going to be able to get rid of this unless you pay for it. <clears throat> so I guess your governance decision is who do you want to pay for it? The person that has the TV and goes to BJ's or everybody pay for it at the depot. But either way, eventually it's going to have to be paid for. Does the user pay for it or is the general taxpayer pay for it? Mm -hmm. And then you've got maintenance of uh, depots that we don't have. Right now. That's, I guess, for staff discussion. With you. That's, that's the problem. It's not. It's not a regional problem. It's a statewide problem because of legislation and the way it was uh, developed at the time. Uh, the only other thing I had. All right. Um, is anyone from environmental here that went to the foraging event, or you didn't go? I was going to give a report on it, but I don't know how it went because I wasn't there. The only other thing I thought that might be worth uh, bringing up is. Uh, the, the announcement that was in the paper for Baquanic Township residents on, if you don't mind, I'll read it. Just, um, I, I get a lot of people from time to time asking me about uh, the senior um, complex, Hurl Village, because there's a waiting list that comes out you know, every couple of years. I don't know if it's once a year or every couple of years when the waiting list opens and, and residents can get on it. So the announcement that was in the trends two weeks in a row was for Baquanic residents um, it says residents of Aquanic Township that are interested in, in applying to be placed on a waiting list for possible occupancy in a one in one of the new 221 
I'm sorry, 22 one-bedroom affordable apartments. They're affordable apartments that they're building down. There are 22 of them. Um, they are currently being built with a tentative move-in date of September 1st, 2016. So if Pequannock residents want to get on that list, they have to submit um, no later than Friday, June 17th. So how do you do that? You go down to, uh, there's an office down there at um, Senior Citizen Housing Corporation right there on the complex. And you can pick up the application. Um, they'll give you a whole list of everything that you have to fill out. They'll collect that between May 23rd to June 3rd. Oh, that's when you can pick up the applications, I'm sorry. Pick up the applications between May 23rd and June 3rd between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can't mail the applications. You have to physically go down there, pick them up, and then um, submit them, like I said, um, uh, by June 17th. All completed applications must be returned by mail. And uh, the applications won't be mailed, but you can go pet down, pick them up, mail them, um, postmark no later than June 17th. And, it, and uh, they have to be mailed to uh, Bacronic Township Senior Citizen Housing Corporation, 101 Boulevard. There is a woman, April, in the office. She'll help you through it. If you, if you have questions, and they do have, do you want me to read the income limits? There are income limits, or don't even, um, it was in the paper, so. To be eligible, applicants must be at least 62 years of age with an annual income as follows. For one person, 31, four to 46,000, and for two people, um, your limit is 31, four to 52, six. You must be a current resident of Pequannock Township and show proof. Um, and then it talks about that the rent, the rent amount, because you're renting those, are $974 a month, which includes heat and hot water, and parking is limited to one vehicle. Um, it's a non-smoking facility, and you're, um, you know, they, this only comes out every couple of years, so that's why I figured I'd tell everybody about it, because they've asked me. I would just like to note, though, that that is a completely separate organization. Yes. The town has nothing to do with Correct. that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've gotten but several emails, right. uh, you know, hey, you yeah, know, how do I get in? And I just keep on sending them. To yeah. The board it's, on the t it's on the Channel 77 for residents, but I figured it was worthwhile just telling people. I got a phone call today about one, so. Did you? <laughs> Councilman Fallon? Uh, I don't have anything. Councilman Vanderhoff? Uh, Councilwoman Winterfield? Uh, the only thing I have is a reminder about the parade and about, uh, I guess, Jean Spilene is going to be the keynote speaker. Uh -huh. And just to pass the word that it'd be nice uh, if everybody's respectful and hangs around after the ceremonies and listens uh, as to why we have Memorial Day. Uh, I also uh, received an email regarding the garage sale that was over the weekend. I wasn't. I was out of town, and I think it was a huge success based on what's Facebook. But there were. Uh, I got a complaint about the way people, the residents, are crossing the street, and they're all over the place. And traffic. Uh, traffic. It was a big problem. Well, it wasn't the traffic. It was that they said it was the pedestrians. Well, so that which caused the traffic cars. Yeah. So I don't know what can be done. I don't know, Pete. Was there a, uh, any kind of police officer, or crossing right. guard, or anything? Can't be a crossing guard. Well, during, during church they have a crossing guard. I mean, there should even be a crossing guard or somebody out there. Well, that's an issue out front because, believe it or not, Monday morning, the mothers taking the kids to daycare weren't using the crosswalk. They're crossing the street and it's place. So it's yeah. the really nature of people who just aren't watching what they're, you know. Yeah, I guess for a while the there was an initiative for that, and I guess maybe. Now that the weather's nice again, we have to do something again about pedestrians crossing the, the crosswalk. And yeah, I guess we, we enforce we against the free cars yeah, not taking you into the crosswalk. I think we also probably should go after people who are not using the crosswalk. Yeah, I think we have to do some outreach, some education. Um, I don't know how, but we should do some education about it. Right. Before someone gets killed. I, I did get a complaint also uh, about the location here, uh, that there was no parking because there was the whole parking lot was filled with, uh, you know, stuff that was for sale, and that we should consider uh, reaching out to the high school to see if we could have 
uh, the high school parking lot next year so there'd be more than enough parking for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that it was a little tricky here parking and so I, I don't know if that's a possibility but uh, I did get that complaint. Uh, Kathy was okay. right. Uh, the Morris County Freeholders will hold their Wednesday, May 25th, 2016 regular meeting here at the Quantic Township Municipal Court at 7 p.m. So if anyone is, uh, would like to attend, that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m., uh, Morris County Freeholders regular meeting. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade will be this Thursday, as Councilwoman Winterfield said. It starts at 10 o'clock. And please, uh, you know, come down to the Municipal Building and the church across the street for the the ceremony at the after the parade it's, it's definitely well worth uh, attending uh, and again as Pete said there'll be no recycling uh, this Monday the next recycling day will be June 6th next on the agenda is public comment if anyone wishes to address the council please wait to be recognized come to the microphone provide your name and address for the record Mike Uh, Mike Machina, 8 Reynolds Road. Um, I read the, the ordinance that Wayne was looking to introduce. Um, I quickly read it. Uh, and it sounded, uh, I was wondering why it was on our agenda. <coughs> was discussion. We always get the notices. Yeah, we always get the uh, But I, I like the idea. I mean, I, I think I might have actually brought it up a couple of years ago about uh, passing something like that. And I think Chris Latito had written something an article about, uh, you know, people tearing down the trees and then the, you know, the town just waits. You know. But anyway, you, you have the, uh, but I thought it was a good idea. And I'd be interested in reading what um, that gentleman brought and was giving you a copy of uh, about the water. We haven't seen a copy of it yet. Yeah, no, when you get it, I'd be interested okay. in if it's possible. Um, and I just had a question about pothole repairs. Um, when does that take place? As needed, and if, if there is a pothole that you wish to, uh, you know, bring to DPW's attention, I believe there's a form yeah. that you can fill out electronically, okay. and I'm sure Mike or uh, Bill Pereira will be more than happy to take Wait. care of it as soon as he can. All right, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Frank Scalieri, 35 West Franklin Avenue. Actually, uh, talking about the uh, garage sales that was in town, and yes, there was a problem because <clears throat> I was on the boulevard, and we do have a law on the books that says you're not supposed to jaywalk. You're supposed to use crosswalks. So, actually, we could enforce that if you catch them walking in the middle of the street. And they walk with the kids, besides. I mean, the kids, they're dragging the kids across the street, and here's cars coming down. I'm saying to myself, lady, you're nuts. You know, at least go to the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that we can uh, look into to try and get somebody to enforce that. That was my point here with daycare, same thing. Yeah. Why would you do it with, you know, with your children? Yeah, I mean, if they see the mother do it, you know they're going to do it when they get older. <laughs> they're just going to cross the street anywhere. Uh -huh. So. Jordan? Jordan Galliano, Tempec Avenue. Um, I just wanted to wait until uh, public concern and critique was over with um, to the end of the meeting. Um, I would like to announce that um, with Steve Connolly and uh, Steve Wolf's help from Saw Foundation, we have finally set up the bank account and the nonprofit to start uh, collecting funds for the Quantic Skate Park. After a lot of time with scheduling concerns and stuff like that, we are now able to let donations come in for the skate park as of tomorrow. We are going to be going public on social media to let everyone know that they can start donating to the uh, Pequonic Skate Park. Um, another thing is that um, in regards to the skate park, this is probably the most fun that Steve and I have been having trying to work out all this stuff. Of course, there's uh, some hitches in, in the way, but I mean, for us, it's the most fun trying to get everything going and get support from the town and and I thank all of you for standing by this far and uh, with us to um, be this far to get this project uh, to where it is now and um, is there anything else, Steve? I think that's it
fun and a learning experience. It is, yeah. You learned a lot, right? How local government works. Exactly. <laughs> yes, so far. There's still a lot of learning. But thank you very much. Thank you. Real quick, we never discussed the ordinance on the dog. That's going to be discussion is going to be uh, next council meeting. I don't even know why we're discussing when we all agreed on it. It should be an ordinance. <clears throat> we never took formal action on it, so we okay. will be. It's on for discussion, and then the following council meeting, I believe, it will be on for you know the ordinance. So. Any other comments, Louise? I was going to say, Louise, you were here. I know. You know, I say it's <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Louise Marchese of 16 Rowland Road. Uh, it wasn't just last weekend. It, it, garage sales are a problem. What I find, because I'm on the far end of town, all the way east, right on the Wayne border, people come flying over the bridge, and if I'm behind them and they see a garage sale, they jam on their brakes, they pull over, they leave their car half hanging out because they want to get to that garage sale. and So it's an ongoing problem. I don't know, I think the people who have the garage sale should kind of monitor what's going on and be considerate. Because a lot of these people, I think, are out of town. Is... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? Next on the agenda, there's no minutes for approval. Next on the agenda, items for closed session. And I do believe we have a, a brief update on brief. contract negotiation. Okay. Um, so, your uh, motion to go into closed session? I'll make that again. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Aye.